The fantasy football playoffs are right around the corner and we are providing you 10 mustache players that you need to be stashing onto your roster to get you ultimate level upside. Because if you missed out on stashes like a J.K. Dobbins before the season, a Jalen Colker, a Kareem Hunt, even a guy like a Tyrone Tracy, there are going to be guys that pop up that can provide ultimate level league winning upside at the end of your bench. And when we start that off, the first guy on this list is going to be Jordan Mason. And we are doing this list based on prize. Priority. So I am doing this how I would do it if I was looking at stashes and I needed some additional roster help. Number one with Jordan Mason. It's crazy. Jordan Watt Mason was an absolute waiver wire darling when the CMC did not take the field in week one. We are now heading into week 11 and we're getting the second game of CMC. The thing that I want to highlight here with Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason with CMC back in week 10 only put had a 5% snap share, one carry for five yards, which tells you all you need to know. This is about to be the full CMC show down to the end. Now, CMC, we do know, battling that major calf injury. And this week, he did end up missing a few practices and missing and being put on to the injury report. He just got off the injury report. That is not me saying that I want CMC to get hurt. Trust me, in the subscriber league, I have CMC, so I'm not asking or begging for a CMC injury. But if I have CMC, and even if I don't, I want Jordan Mason. He's 58% rostered. His roster ability has gone way down. And I still want a piece of it because I do know that if anything were to happen to CMC, Jordan Mason's line gets called. That could ultimately win me a week before the playoffs, during the playoffs, and ultimately win me a fantasy football championship. So make sure that if you're in one of those leagues where the 42% of leagues that are out there, that Jordan Mason's available 100%, make sure that you go and stash Jordan Mason. Now, my second mustache player, it is going to be Josh Palmer for the Chargers. And Josh Palmer was supposed to be the number one in this offense. A lot of us were excited about Ladd McConkey. Of course, he got the second round draft capital, but a lot of people were prototyping Josh Palmer to essentially take over that X position and be absolutely elite. Well, he's a wide receiver 76 right now in the season, and he's 19% rostered over on sleeper leagues. Really, the biggest game that he had was in week nine versus Cleveland, where he had 14.3 fantasy points, had four targets, two receptions for one total touchdown. And when we look at this overall depth chart for Josh Palmer, we got Ladd McConkey, Quentin Johnson, and then Josh Palmer and DJ Chark are kind of vying for that wide receiver three spot. I just like the matchups, Cincinnati, Baltimore, Atlanta, Kansas City. I like these matchups coming down the line for the Chargers because that means that they're going to have to pass the ball. They're playing opponents like Cincinnati, Baltimore, Kansas City, where as much as we think they can rely on that ground and pound game and rely on that defense, those offenses are going to be good enough that they're really going to have to force Justin Herbert and this team to throw the ball down the field. And with them wanting to throw the ball down the field, that's going to benefit Ladd. That's going to benefit Quentin Johnston. But that's also going to benefit a guy like Josh Palmer. Will Destley has looked super productive in the tight end spot. So you might say to me, well, Caleb, Will Destley's the the third option. Josh Palmer, this is more of a, a deeper stash. And for me, I really think Josh Palmer, there's a lot of exciting things we can look for in the next few weeks with Josh Palmer. That's why I wanted to bring him up in the stash video. If you have roster space and Jordan Mason isn't there, George, Josh Palmer is the number one stash that I am adding this week. The next guy that I would be stashing, he's been in this for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's going to be Trey Benson for the Arizona Cardinals, 32% rostered across leagues. And Trey Benson, the breakout is happening, ladies and gentlemen. If you are not invested into Trey Benson and you are in one of these 68% of leagues that he's available, go add him. 12 fantasy points in week nine, 10 fantasy points in week 10 versus the Jets. And in each of these games, eight attempts in week nine, 10 attempts in week 10, 62 yards versus the Jets, 6.2 yards per carry, even had two targets and two receptions to add on to this. He led the team in rushing on Sunday. Now, James Conner was super efficient. And we talked about when early on in the season, why Trey Benson could be beneficial. Not only did they draft him in the early part of the third round, but Trey Benson was a lot more explosive running back than a guy like a James Conner. And we understand James Conner. He's had elite level touchdown upside. He's been pretty much a 15 running back over the last three seasons for the Arizona Cardinals. But when you invest in a guy like Trey Benson, he's going to start eating into the work. And 28 and 27% of the snap share to put up 10 and 12 fantasy points is crazy. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to become an every week starter, but what I am saying is as he continues to eat more and more into James Conner's role, Trey Benson will just become even more fantasy football relevant. So right now, Trey Benson's a guy that you need to be adding onto your team, especially as we're looking at how the running back landscape currently is and how quickly a guy like a Trey Benson, if he overtakes a James Conner or a James Conner injury, boom, Trey Benson instantly gets could be propelled into a top 18, top 15 level running back week in, week out. So feel good about Jordan Mason. Feel good about Josh Palmer. Feel good about Trey Benson. Make sure these guys are stashed. Now, this next guy, I added him to the list and I didn't want to just say that 
he's a stash, but he kind of still is. It's going to be Drake May for the Patriots, 24% rostered on Sleeper. And I understand a lot of us don't like to roster two quarterbacks. I get it. I 100% get it because I don't do it. But if you are missing out, if you do not have one of the top five to six guys, if you do not have Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jaden Daniels, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Brock Purdy, you might be looking at yourself as like a week to week starter. Like as much as I love some Kyler Murray, I think there are some weeks that you might want to start a guy like a Drake May who has been able to show elite level upside. Now the last two weeks, last week versus Chicago and the week before that versus Tennessee really maybe was the highest output of fantasy football value. But the thing that we see with Drake May is this Konami code level rushing, keeping him with decent fantasy points. I mean, we look at Chicago, he had four attempts for 24 yards rushing versus Tennessee. He had eight attempts for 95 yards. So he's constantly getting about three to five rushes a game, which is giving him like a pretty good solid floor of around 25 to 30 yards minimum of rushing, which is adding on to his overall fantasy football totals. We understand the weapons are not good for this Patriots offense, but I definitely think you need to check out what a guy like Drake May stashed on your roster could do for your overall fantasy football team. The next guy we're going to be talking about stashing. It is going to be Roshan Johnson for the Chicago Bears. And Roshan, the guy who took over the Rojo nickname, is a guy that I still want to be adding. Now, he was more of a stash earlier on in the season, pretty much had a little bit of week three and week five, had really great games, but his snap share has gone down and his attempts, he's really been on the field mostly for blocking, but coming behind DeAndre Swift, I understand DeAndre Swift is the number one. We've talked about how we've loved DeAndre Swift all season long in trades. Roshan Johnson's a guy that as a high priority handcuff, definitely think he needs to still be stashed. He's 14% rostered. I understand if you're in a super shallow league, maybe even like Caleb, I don't know if I can stash a guy like a Roshan Johnson. I understand that Caleb Williams for the Bears has looked terrible, but coming down the stretch, Green Bay, Minnesota, Detroit, San Francisco, Minnesota, again, the Bears are going to have to stay in it. They're going to have to try to score points. They're going to have to throw the ball and Roshan Johnson, his real play is at the goal line. And so if we can kind of see this offense, hopefully start to kind of turn itself around with Caleb Williams, that's a big ask. I know they fired their offensive coordinator. I know Caleb Williams hasn't looked good. But I do think Roshan Johnson is a guy that, if given the opportunity, could provide some deeper fantasy football value to your overall team. The next guy we're going to be talking about, it's going to be Pop Douglas. And I swear, I swear on my mother, I swear on everything. I swear I could be brothers with this brother because we are absolutely talking about him almost every stash video. Wide receiver 15 right now, 44% rostered. And I don't think enough people are giving the credit to a guy like Pop Douglas for being the number one for Drake May. Like Jalen Polk, disappointing. KJ Osborne more disappointing. Kayshawn Booty, disappointing. There's been a few bright spots for Kayshawn, but not recently. Kendrick Bourne, pretty disappointing. Where Pop Douglas is sliding in and week in and week out, I mean, week nine versus Tennessee had nine targets for seven yards, 35 receptions. Five targets, four receptions, 50 yards versus Chicago. So it wasn't like amazing versus Chicago or or even Tennessee. He got the volume, but it wasn't great. But I just kind of continue to see Drake May taking those steps that we'd like to see a rookie quarterback start to take. And that's only going to benefit his number one option, which is going to be DeMar pop douglas i understand i prioritized all these guys ahead of him like i would of course take jordan mason josh palmer trey benson over pop douglas like we said as we get in this video i want to provide enough options that are out there for you guys that if you do need some high upside guys on the bench go some pop douglas on your team and if you want to do it you could just say it's caleb's favorite fantasy football player honestly we should probably put a jersey of pop douglas behind me if we're being completely honest next guy that you should be stashing gonna be nick westbrook akine for the tennessee titans he did not continue his touchdown streak he from week six to week nine he scored a touchdown each game, had four touchdowns over that stretch. But versus the Chargers, only had six fantasy points, three targets, three receptions for 31 yards. The touchdown streak ended. I get it. 7% rostered. But when we're looking at this overall, who's the wide receiver two next to Calvin Ridley? It hasn't really been Tyler Boyd. It's been Nick, Nick Westbrook, Akine. I want to continue to bet on that coming down the stretch. Minnesota, Houston, Washington, they're going to have to throw the ball. Tennessee to even have a chance. They're going to be down. So they're going to have to throw in the second half, benefiting a guy like Nick Westbrook, Akine. Next guy that you should be stashing. It's going to be Ray Davis for the Buffalo Bills. And a few weeks ago, we saw Ray Davis have a standout day. Week nine versus Miami, 17 fantasy points. Comes back in week 10, only puts up 0.6, 15% snap share, three carries for six yards. Wasn't great. We know that James Cook is the ultimate level bell cow. And really, Josh Allen is the secondary running back. Ray Davis is kind of sliding in here as the RB3. So this is purely a handcuff play, but the Bills have been in a super efficient rushing offense. Coming down the stretch, we got Kansas City, then they got their bye, San Francisco, Rams, 
Detroit, but this is where it gets juicy. When we get into week 16 and week 17 for the fantasy football playoffs, he's got New England in week 16. So if something were to happen to James Cook, if this is like you maybe still have time to go trade for James Cook, might be like cool to do. But if something were to happen, knock on wood to James Cook, Ray Davis is going to be right there as the handcuff that I absolutely want stashed at the end of the bench. Next guy that I would absolutely want stashed at the end of the bench, it's going to be Jalen Wright for the Miami Dolphins. And Jalen Wright was a high praise guy for us earlier on in the season when he got his full run in week five where he had a 32% snap share, put up 8.6 fantasy points. But essentially since then, he's been super inefficient, hasn't been getting onto the field. But how can you blame the guy when he's playing behind Devon and playing behind Raheem Moster? And they had no Tua Tonga Vailoa. So the offense was absolutely brutal. When we look at Jalen Wright coming down the stretch, I think with Tua Tonga Vailoa, and especially as they try to push for the playoffs, Jalen Wright, if anything were to happen to Devon and Raheem, definitely would be valuable, especially when we're looking at playoff time. It is rough matchup for San Francisco and Cleveland, but we do know that Mike McDaniel can absolutely get these running backs cooking. So what I'll say to you is if you have one of Devon or Raheem Mostert and you don't have Jalen Wright, go pick up Jalen Wright. You're going to feel a lot better about yourself and that safety net that Jalen Wright does possess. He is only rostered in 15% of sleeper leagues. So like I said, this is a little bit deeper of a suggestion, but definitely go target some Jalen Wright. And my last and final stash for this video, it's going to be the Miami Dolphins defense. Listen, we have not talked about a defense on the stash video all season long, but I felt like the Miami Dolphins are appropriate because this week they're going up against Vegas and then next week they're going up against New England. As much as I love a guy like Drake May, as much as I want to pray and hope that Pop Douglas pops off and is an absolutely great stash. Miami Dolphins offense has kind of started to pick things up and I like these matchups coming down the stretch. Now, week 13 versus Green Bay, week 14 versus Jets. Listen, it's rough. We know that streaming defense. So if you're a streaming defense type of guy, go get the Miami Dolphins defense. I think that will absolutely help your fantasy football team over the next two weeks as we push to the playoffs. If you like fantasy football, if you like winning, hit that like and subscribe button on the way to 4,000 subscribers. Check out these two videos if you haven't answered every comment down below. Appreciate you for being here. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.